Okay, welcome, welcome to Truck You Podcast. Uh, my name is Sebastian. Uh, my name is Jose. So, the first one, intro. Um, can you tell me a little bit what um, what do you do here? Um, I'm one of the diesel mechanics over here at Aero Service currently. Awesome, and I'm I'm the owner of Aero Service, and I'm excited to do this, man. It's gonna be fun. Hopefully, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, we uh, tried one before and didn't work out with my uh, lack of <laughs> skills in recording. But um, yeah, so we should probably talk, do a little intro on what we're doing as a company and as the team. And what. so do you want to start and kind of give a background how you ended up uh, being a technician and why? Oh, uh, look, I started back in uh, 2012, so I was 17 at the time. Um, what got me into the industry, um, I was always around trucks. My father started driving back in uh, 2002, so he's been driving for like 17 years. And I was just always interested in the trucking industry. I used to, I remember, you know, taking trips with him, and I just, you know, always got something for it. The thing is that when I started wrenching, I was obviously too young, 17, I couldn't get a hold of my CDL, so I just started wrenching and just got, I wanted to be part of the industry. Cool. What is, do you have like a memory around when you were ki- uh, young with your dad in the truck that like st- stucks with you? Like you always remember it? Um, let's see. Uh, I would say <laughs> there was one f- I did. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Cause uh, I used to be in the truck with him and he used to be, he used to hook up and he would always tell me to hit the red uh, glad hand mm-hmm. to let the trailer air up. Yeah. And I pressed the yellow one on oh, accident geez. and the truck started rolling. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, I always remember that one. Was he mad? Uh, yeah, he was mad. Uh, <laughs> he gave funny. me some shit. Um, awesome. Yeah. So I, I, I started also with my, because of my dad and I grew up around him driving. And when we lived in Poland, he drove buses and then, okay. um, trucks. And so he had a lot of, um, you know, driving experience and knowledge. So I came here, got my CDL in 09 and started driving for him. For, he had an operation. He was a con- he was a contractor. So uh, I started driving and learning and kind of wanted to um, take it to a next level. Right. And um, my memory around what I remember, what was always i don't know when i think about driving and what like how i fell in love with 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 big trucks and in general equipment and i'm you know i'm a gearhead just as as much as you are probably but uh it was when he drove a bus in poland and he would a little i don't know even how that was allowed but i had a little chair like this (laughs) and i would sit next (laughs) Next to him and we would like we would drive down the road and he would tell me what cars were passing by like i remember that yeah and, and then i was like, yeah i was like five six um and i for some reason that always gets back to me right um yeah so um as far as your experience and knowledge what is it that you like doing or what is it that that gets you you know motivated to getting dirty Getting dirty, yeah, yeah getting yeah. dirty. Right. Yeah. Pro- so, uh, solving problems around problem solving, you know, diagnostics. Yeah, uh, that's my thing. Awesome. So, what do you think? So, we could probably take it to um, many different directions here, but I think I want to uh, give a little more background and kind of intro since um, you've been here. What now? A few months? It's been a few months now. Yeah, I would say like what three three months roughly. Yeah. So just for context, I think we should um, kind of talk about what happened here. Since um, I own a trucking company, small small fleet, um, we needed a shop, and um, it took a, took me a while to. Um, well, it didn't take me a while. It took me a while uh, <laughs> to find one that actually worked. That met we, your needs, right? Yeah, and it was a good location. So we. It was a long story. Maybe I, I can get into that some other time. But we finally got it, and yeah, it's been it's been pretty interesting. We we uh, you came what April or May? Uh, no, it was actually late June. So it was yeah, late really. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So when you walked in, I was like, you know, that guy is definitely 
knowledgeable. <laughs> I tested you. You were the only one. I had so many mechanics in the first question. Do you remember? You remember what I asked you about emissions? Yeah, they were DPF rela uh, EGR related, DPF related yeah. questions. You asked me. The None years. of those guys that came for interviews knew the answers. You were the <laughs> only one that knew the answers. Yeah, you asked me three questions. Yeah, that's uh, so funny. What did you uh, give me? Your what's what's your side of the story? What did you think when you came to see me? Well, honestly, that's the first time I ever been to a job interview where they actually asked me those three questions. So mm -hmm. it, it caught me. It caught me off guard, but I knew the the answer to the questions, yeah, yeah. but I was never asked those questions. So, it what would that? But that's interesting. What would they ask you at a shop when you go on and and like go do an interview? Honestly, it was just uh, more of like what skills you had, what you were able to capable of doing, mm -hmm. and what was your weak side, and that was basically it. But never, never such questions. <laughs> what did you think when I asked you that? Uh, that obviously you knew what you were talking about. And uh, and. Uh, the, the, yeah, the the reason do you, do you th do you know why I asked you those questions? I mean, obviously you do, but like, um, why did why do you think it was important to me? Because you definitely want to stay away from the emissions. Yeah, well, stay away. Well, that's stay one away. Thing, I mean, but if you're knowledgeable around emissions as a technician, you should probably know what year EGR started, right? right? And well, definitely. I mean, that should be a no brainer. Yeah. But 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 that's the thing. That a lot of guys, lot of didn't, guys know. didn't know. And I wasn't looking for somebody that just is wrenching and not really paying attention to what's happening. Right. right. Because, um, as you know, emissions can be complicated. And uh, if you don't know emissions, or if you don't know how to work, and when they, what they do, then how the heck are you gonna <laughs> exactly fix the truck, you're gonna right? be f going crazy. So I'm thinking. Uh, What's our objective for the shop? I, I think what what's first. I think what's our objective for the podcast? Because I think we're gonna try some um, different angles here, and we're gonna find our traction. But I think what do, what do you think we're trying to do here? With the, what, what's your angle? Um, I would say start giving tips out to guys. Yeah. Uh, either first time owner operators or the brand new guys out of fr fresh out of school. Yeah. Um. I, or even guys have been driving for years. I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I've I don't know. You probably know some guys uh, as as well as I do that they they've been driving for a long time and and they could refresh some of their uh, yeah knowledge and learning and maybe learning from each other is a big part. I love learning from you when you know we're working on projects right. like I this. Don't know this if one you can right see here on the video, but uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, wh well, what happened here? Can you explain? <laughs> I yeah, wish the, the light was on. I think it's on. You can see it. Uh, the truck actually came in for a misfire. Yeah. And uh, we did the injector cutout test. Injectors were working fine. Yeah. Still had a miss. Um, pulled the valve cover off. Ran the overhead, and that was a no-brainer right there that the head was fucked. Yeah. Notice that the exhaust valve on number six was completely off the adjustment. Yeah. So that's when we went with removing the head, and we, yeah, that's when we saw that the valve seat was shot on it. Okay. Yeah, and that's definitely a fun project. We're trying to squeeze it in between everything else that we're doing, but um, overhead adjustment, the it it's it, how many we've missed it when I bought it. I, I don't know if I have to check, but I think we didn't do it. If we did, we didn't do a good job probably. <laughs> it was back in the old shop where we didn't own it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely helping people out i think oh, yeah, owners because what we've i've experienced with um you know having hired a lot of drivers and owners um it's like i think there's a lot of th there could be more resources and more information available just so so it helps out right. making better decisions and um one we had do you remember you want to talk about like a one Example we had since you started that we came the guy came in and was like holy crap like he doesn't really know what's going on. Uh, there was a guy with the D13 I believe right. It was yeah. like a nice truck. Yeah. And he had like four hundred thousand and he was so happy. Yeah. But we started looking into it. Yeah. And it was a fleet truck that wasn't really. It was taken care of, but they they dumped it right before probably the DPF needed to be replaced. <laughs> So, well, you know, like big fleets usually like to get rid of trucks before that five hundred thousand mark or around there, after their warranty is over with the dealership and boom out the yeah. out the door and <laughs> yeah, good luck to the next guy. Yeah, it's it's funny because um, 
he was literally and that's uh, hasn't been really that's been a pattern i've been seeing you know owners buying trucks because they're excited they've been looking for some time and it's like i really want to get into this not realizing what they're getting getting into which i i mean we both know there's enough resources online that you could probably do some kind of basic research for oh, a yeah. few hours and learn and i don't know maybe our angle is a little skewed but we've had enough experience to know what works and what doesn't right because i think majority of new emissions are not necessarily um well they're less reliable right but but there's a lot more expensive definitely to there's going to be a lot more expensive maintenance yeah. so just always keep that in mind yeah and with slim margins as owners and in trucking industry it's very critical to know like yeah. the you know fuel maintenance and the most two biggest expenses you have and and they so they that you know usually um somebody makes a purchase decision based on okay well the truck the newer i can afford the better right yeah and the newer and they're like oh it's a 2015 nothing's gonna happen to it that's yeah it's really solid truck yeah okay yeah <laughs> we'll see down the line yeah that's that's been a, that's just the approach of buying a truck like buying a car is definitely not something it's that, completely different yeah the, well the problem is it's hard to find an older truck that's reliable but first you have to know what works but second find one that really somebody took care of took care of it right? exactly well pre-purchase uh inspection obviously yeah. take it to a shop have them go look through it properly yeah or even whoever's selling if you if you find a guy that's been an owner for you know and you actually years, know the owner yeah, yeah and you know the, yeah but you could you could tell a lot from literally just w- watching looking over the truck and looking see how he took care of his the truck. record yeah i mean if you see you know like I've seen some trucks that have been outside, um, fallen apart, but the rec- re- maintenance records, they were very clean inside. The guy took, a, took so we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't pay attention to it, but then right. if you start digging in, in the records. The cosmetic. And, and the, <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, the uh, older Volvos, early 2000s, they're, they're prone to rust. Oh, yeah. The definitely. door is completely messed up on those door things. Door on the floors on um, those. Yeah. Especially the the first chassis before um, the upgrade in two thousand three four, that that older chassis yeah that, that was that was something big that issue on those I've seen such crazy rust on those it's crazy which is interesting because you would think no because they they were building them here I I, th- I was gonna say they <laughs> came from Europe but there's still cab overs there <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, what else you wanna intro what what else uh, would you wanna like out I, I would say. Give me the, like a funny story that you had um, fixing a truck or uh, a problem that you were gonna solve, and it like either you messed up or you were, like it was something simple that you were thinking, overthinking it. Um, it's none that I can none that I can think of as at this moment. Okay. Um, you didn't you don't have any funny story that around a truck? Because I'm trying to think what we've had in the shop so far. And I, um, yeah, I, I nothing comes to mind right now. I put you on the spot, but that's no, actually, no, I can't think of one right now. I know, right? No. It's so weird because we usually talk about stuff like that all the time, and 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 now we can't really come up with anything. But um, so what is it that you like as far as intro first episode? I think um, what is it something that you would want? What is it that you like about? doing this that um keeps you in it and more i would say i'm trying to formulate my question better um what's behind you know you being i mean you're obviously good uh, (laughs) and i i totally see that and i saw that and you you have a very uh good sense of um understanding the truck overall which is something that i've uh, seen across the industry where just mechanics are focused on one thing and it's very narrow focused um kind of analysis right. approach and you're thinking more um on a broader scale um 
Yeah, man. I, what do you? What do you like? I, obviously, there's passion behind it in what you do. But is this? My passion is engine. Uh, that's what I love doing. Is it overhauls? Yeah. Overhauls. Yeah. Well, we got to do more overhauls. Yeah. Stuff, man. <laughs> um. Why? 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 Just uh, actually, I did my first overhaul when I was 19. So. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was uh, yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> really? And the driver actually uh, gave me a call to see if I can run the overhead on the truck. Oh, no I already has like five hundred thousand. That's awesome. So I mean, <laughs> what engine was it? It was a Detroit fourteen liter. Okay. Um, what did you learn from that first overhaul? Well, how did you do it? Like, I mean, uh, that's my boss actually. He. Um, he just threw me at the truck. He's like, uh, cause I was helping. Obviously, I was helping guys out at yeah. the shop. You know, torquing bottom ends or just whatever. And uh, I was just watching the guys, and you know, caught on to it. And obviously, they had to help me out with certain things. But yeah, most of it, majority of it, I did it all by myself. Okay. And all the uh, torque specs, everything you just oh, looked yeah. it up and and. Well, we had a uh, Mitchell, so we have all the torque specs, so everything just comes over right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. W who helped? Like. Was there one guy that like helped you out that, that that you looked up to that was like yeah actually good? one of my buddies real good buddies I still talk to him to this day yeah. uh, Renee yeah uh -huh. what is he what what's he what what is he like what, is he does he specialize in like certain engines or why why was it so at that point at that shop uh, when I first started there he was the main engine guy mm -hmm. so you know I I wanted to be him yeah when I got there I was fresh I was just doing PMs. Yeah. So you know, I saw him, and I'm like, I want to be that guy. Awesome. And he 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 showed you a lot. He, he like showed you how to work on engines and oh, taught yeah. you a lot. Yeah. 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 Real cool guy. Cool. Do you know more than him now? Uh, yeah. Actually, he does call me up now because now he's a shop manager, so he doesn't really wrench anymore. Mm -hmm. So he's taking care of the guys, watching what if the guys need any help. You know, he'll yeah. go help them out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he does call me up every occasionally. Okay. Awesome. That's that's good, man. Yeah. I um I really um don't like I'm trying to I always looked up to fleet bigger fleets and I always want to build a bigger fleet. Um, as of right now, we have 45 trucks, so that's like a medium. Cons uh, it's like a medium sized fleet where in, in the Midwest where we are, and um, it's pretty much it's it's been up and like super crazy ride right because we've been growing a lot and you know i i came to a point where we needed to have a shop that wasn't was running trying to run use equipment and um building a fleet it's a ne the necessity and i say if i regret one thing is probably finding one earlier because you would have saved a lot of money yeah right hell yeah even even a small one and well, here's here's the thing. You're still, you know, if the trucks are causing a lot of issues, then you're still going to pay a lot because we're, I mean, we're a separate business. The shop is a separate business right. than the trucking, and we still have to pay for what for services rendered. So it's more about catching the things ahead of time, right? Versus, you know, because all the attention broke. is on on the trucks. Yeah, because how many times do we have? Um, somewhat empty shop if there's no customers and uh, i'm like hey go check out some trucks and we we'll bring a list find of something. what yeah. trucks need to be yeah. attended because like if you you can predict a lot of things especially around you know alignment front alignment tires you can catch it pretty quickly right uh, or drive shafts but if you you know if you don't have the ability to do that then that's gonna cost or you don't lot. know what you're looking at <laughs> or you know what yeah. you're looking at yeah because i mean we've i've had experience where you know, I learned from my dad. He showed me he's very g good with mechanics, so right. I learned from him. And then when I drove, I actually listened to um, podcasts and things that would kind of expand that a little bit more. And that's how I found gliders. And glider kits are definitely our favorite probably, right? Yeah, definitely. We should, definitely the way to go. we're going to talk about in episode two on uh, favorite trucks to start and what, what, we, what trucks we like. So... I think we got a pretty decent intro. What do you think? I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. Twenty solid. minutes. So, uh, yeah, uh, we had the party today. I'm excited. Um, we're gonna shoot some videos and uh, spread the word to Grand everybody. Opening. Yeah, um, and yeah, uh, thank you for listening and talk to you soon.